Hi. Right. So let's go ahead and run through a basic uh, KVL example. And to start this off, let me go ahead and just draw a circuit out that we're going to take a look at. Okay, so this is a basic circuit, and I'm just going to go ahead and assign um, voltages to each one of these. So we'll call this V1 over here, V2, V3, V4, and V5. Okay, so here's the circuit, and let's say in this problem that we were given V1, this um, source voltage, we know is 10 volts, we're given V2, in this case is 5 volts, and we're given V5, which is 2 volts. So given that, um, we can pretty simply find V3 and V4 using uh, Kirchhoff's voltage law. Um, in order to start this, let's just start off with a loop, because um, that's what really what um, Kirchhoff's voltage law is about. It's about loops and the voltage differences. So let's say our first loop is maybe the most obvious one, just this internal one right here. So let's say I'm starting here, going around and back in this direction. And um, as we're making this loop, let's um, consider how we want to um, denote these uh, sources and, and resistors here. So this, um, this first res um, is a source here. And so as we're going from down here to the top, it's actually going to gain voltage because it's a source. So it's going to be a voltage rise. So we're going to have a minus up here and a positive up here. Um, across this, as the current's going this way, it's actually going to reduce. It's going to be a voltage drop. So we'll put a plus here and a minus here because it's going down. And on this side, it's going to be coming downward. So we got a plus up here and minus over here. And as far as these outer ones, V4 and V5, we could imagine a different loop. Let's call this loop one right here. And let's imagine a bigger loop around here and And we'll call this loop three. So um, loops going this way, the current's going this way. So as we're going across V4, we're going to have plus on this side, minus on this side. And as we're coming down across V5, it'll be plus on this side and minus on this side. So that's an um, important way to start this off with some loops and then and, and there's defining um, the positive and minus signs on each of these. If you get one of these wrong, as long as you're consistent, um, Kirchhoff's voltage logic will still, will still work out for you. But it helps just to, you know, to think through it and, and get these uh, signs right the, um, as, you, as you start it. Okay, so we're going to ready to apply Kirchhoff's voltage law, but what is that law? Let's go ahead and write that down. So KVL, we're going to, there's a couple different forms of this, but let's go ahead and use this form where we've got this sum of our voltage differences, which we denoted in green down here, is equal to zero. And of course, we're summing around each of these loops. So let's go ahead and just denote that we're talking about loops here. So again, Kirchhoff's voltage law is um, with res respect to loops and to voltage differences. So this is um, what we can use this basic equation. And let's just go ahead and look at our first loop, loop one. So for loop one, what we're going to do as we go around this, we're going to sum up those voltage differences. And um, it's important to make sure that we're consistent with um, these plus and minus signs as we sum it up. So we say we're going to start here. And um, just to be consistent, let's go ahead and start with this minus sign for V1. So we're going to say, since we, got it, we run into that minus first, let's go ahead and plug that minus in up here. So we start with minus V1, and then we go keep going. And we're going to hit the plus side of V2. So we're going to go plus V2. And if we keep going around this loop, we're going to hit the plus side of V3. So we'll say plus V3. And then we're going to get back to our starting location. So now we can just sum all these up and set that equal to zero per KVL equation. So just to make a point here, you, if we flipped all these signs around, this would still work. Um, you just got to be consistent in making sure that you're, there's a difference between a source and, and a resistor. But um, this will work. So that's our first equation for loop one. And we just need one other loop to, to figure this out because we only got two unknowns. So we just need two equations. But instead of loop three, let's go ahead with um, another loop here. We'll call this loop two. So we'll say we start here. We're going to go up around this way, loop two. And let's go ahead and write that out here. OK, so for loop two, we're starting here. And we're going up. And the first thing we hit is that minus sign. So we're going to start off with minus V3. 
Now, you might be wondering about this because in this other equation, as we went through these resistors, we, we added them. And here we're going through this one and we are um, starting with a subtraction. But notice that we're going a different way than, than we were in the other um, equation. This, this side we're going down, but this side we're going up. So while it's positive on this equation, in this loop it's actually going to be negative. Um, so important to keep those proper. And as we go up here, we're going to hit the positive side of V4 and we're going to hit the positive side of E5 and we set that equal to zero. Okay, so now we've just got our two equations, two unknowns, so we can solve this pretty simply and we can just go ahead and plug in these, these values. So maybe we're solving here for V3, so we could first solve for V3 and say that that's going to be equal to V1 minus V2, which is equal to um, 10, which was our V1 and our V2 was 5. So it's going to be equal to 5 volts. So that was easy. And we can go ahead and take that 5 volts and plug it in for our V3 down here. So we've got negative 5 plus V4, which we're trying to solve for, um, plus V5, which is 2 volts over here, equals 0. So we can say that V4 is equal to 5 minus 2 equals 3 volts. And we're done. We solved um, this uh, very simple KVL problem. Um, but note, we, this could have been a little bit more complicated, say, if they didn't, they didn't give us um, that source voltage of 10 volts. We could still actually solve for it um, because the, in that case, we could just introduce our um, loop 3. I forgot to label this as 2 here. We could have um, used our loop 3. We'd have three equations, three unknowns, including V1, and we, we could have solved for it. That would have been a little more complicated. But hopefully this gets the, just a basic idea across of how you can use these loops and voltage differences and KVL to um, solve for other voltages. And until next time, take care.